Hello, welcome to this lesson on vapor pressure. The question of the day, when molecules of the same type have a strong attraction for one another, what are their resulting properties? There is a very complex definition for vapor pressure out there, but really the one I like to use is this, the willingness of a solid or liquid to evaporate and become a gas. Particles do not have to boil in order to become a gas. They can just evaporate on their own. Um, you may have ever had a glass of water on your bedside table, perhaps. You'll leave it there for a few days. The water level can drop, and that is because the water is evaporating out of this glass. That is the concept of vapor pressure. Stuff will just evaporate on its own. Some substances will have that evaporation happen more quickly than others, and that is a credit to the amount of vapor pressure that they have. So when the liquid molecules have enough energy to evaporate, they push pressure, push against the atmosphere, and they are able to become a gas. The strength that they have in this pushing against the atmosphere is called their vapor pressure. When you have a closed container like a beaker with this watch glass over top or a closed off water bottle, the particles, the, the liquid particles that are in here will still try to evaporate. So this area, the empty pocket in the bottle or the container, this will fill up with gas and that gas is going to be a mixture of the air and these particles that are pushing against their atmosphere. Vapor pressure is temperature dependent, so the hotter it is, the more willing these particles are to evaporate. This is why winter puddles take a longer time to dry up than summer puddles. If you have a rainstorm in the winter, those puddles are going to stay around for a much longer time. In the summertime, even by me, like where I live, sometimes the ground is hot enough that the water uh, will evaporate. So after a good rainstorm in the summertime, like I can see the water evaporating because the ground is that hot um, and that increases the vapor pressure of the water very dramatically. You can also see vapor pressure in action. If you have a plastic water bottle or a glass water bottle perhaps that you can see through and um, you allow it to sit out, that water will slowly evaporate and there will be water vapor in the empty pocket of the bottle up at the top. And that water vapor can also hit the walls of the container and condense. And that's how you get little water droplets inside your water bottle. Take a second to think about which of these two situations has a higher vapor pressure, a substance that is evaporating or a substance that is boiling. The substance that is boiling has a higher vapor pressure because theoretically this would have a lot more heat added to it, which would increase the temperature of your substance, which in turn will increase the vapor pressure of the individual particles. They have more energy to push up against the atmosphere and become a gas. A high vapor pressure indicates that the substance really wants to evaporate and become a gas. Think for a second how that would affect their boiling point and their intermolecular force. These substances are going to have low boiling points, meaning that they don't need a lot of energy to boil. They're going to boil quite easily, and that is a result of a very weak intermolecular force. If you have ever taken off nail polish and you've used um, acetone, which is nail polish remover, that dries off of your nails very quickly. Um, even think of hand sanitizer. The alcohol that's in the hand sanitizer will evaporate very quickly and dry your hands. If you compare that to, you know, washing your hands with water and then not drying them with a towel, but having your hands air dry, they're going to take a lot longer to air dry because they don't have a very high vapor pressure. Substances with low vapor pressures don't really have a desire to evaporate. They would rather be a liquid. So what do you think about their boiling point and intermolecular force? Their result would be a very high boiling point. It's going to take a heck of a lot of energy to get this substance to boil, and that is the result of a very strong intermolecular force. The boiling point of a substance is when the atmospheric pressure is equal to the vapor pressure of that substance. So when the substance has a vapor pressure that is equal to the atmospheric pressure, it is easier for it to become part of that atmosphere that is the boiling point. The boiling point can happen at any temperature. Um, and that is going to depend on an adjustment of the pressure. So 
Um, if I were teaching this in a classroom, I would show you a video of water boiling in a bell jar, but because we're on YouTube right now, instead I will just link that in the video description. I think it's a really great video. Um, really what happens is that you have a beaker of water inside this big jar and um, it's set up such that a vacuum pump can suck the air out of that bell jar, which is going to remove um, air particles and more or less drop the atmospheric pressure. And in doing that, the water that is in there will have a high enough vapor pressure that it will match the vapor pressure. It'll match the atmospheric pressure and therefore it can boil even though it's not 100 degrees Celsius. So please take a few minutes to watch that video when you're done here. The normal boiling point is really what we talk about most often when we talk about boiling points, and that is going to be the temperature where the substance boils when the pressure is standard pressure. So for water, that's 100 degrees Celsius. Water boils at 100 Celsius at one atmosphere of atmospheric pressure or 101.3 kilopascals. The normal boiling point of water specifically is at STP, but you can change the um, boiling point of water dependent on atmospheric pressure. So if you are higher up in the atmosphere, maybe at the top of a mountain where there's less air pressure, you don't have to get your water as hot to boil it. Typically the questions you get about vapor pressure are going to be in concept regarding the type of intermolecular force or it is going to be based on a graph of vapor pressure charted over a particular temperature. In that case, you would just use graph reading skills in order to determine the vapor pressure of the substance at a particular temperature um, and then compare boiling points. So typically on those graphs, we would look at um, the temperature on the x-axis and the pressure, the air pressure on the y-axis, and you can find your standard pressure and then find the normal boiling point of that substance just using the vapor pressure curve. Most of those curves are going to be exponential looking. They're not quite exponential, but they kind of look that way with the, the curvy line. The more energy that is added um, and the more the more heat energy that is added, the easier a time particles have um, evaporating and the stronger their intermolecular force, the harder time they have evaporating. So it's important to kind of weigh those two things side by side when you are comparing the vapor pressure of two different substances. That's all I have for you on vapor pressure. Again, you should go watch that bell jar video. I will have it linked in the video description, but I will also link the video that I have done on the effects of intermolecular forces, which will dive into this um, boiling point and vapor pressure together a little bit. So you can see better how the intermolecular force plays a role in vapor pressure and boiling point. Um, please leave any questions you have in the comment section below the video. Subscribe so you don't miss the next lesson and I'll see you there. Bye.